Hey everybody, this is Fnord. Uh, I'd like to apologize for the quality of the following video. This is a recording off of my computer because for some reason when I uploaded this to YouTube it didn't come out right. And I'm doing this because I really like the way it turned out. So, uh, also I don't want to have to do it again. So here you go, enjoy this uh, copy of the dynamic lighting tutorial thing. Hello again, YouTube land. This is your host, Nord, and welcome to the Color Animal Inn. Uh, in tonight's special instructional video, we will be discussing how to use the dynamic lighting layer on the Roll20 game system. If you were with us last time, you saw me build a map um, based on a donjon random, randomly generated map and import that to World 20 and set it up so that uh, the players see one thing and the GM sees another. In this case, the red squares are all secret doors. Uh, all the various numbers on the rooms are all hidden from the players, so all they're seeing is basically a black-walled map with a, a grid. Now, at the moment, as a player, they would see... Not exactly that, but close. They would see something. You know what? I think I did it again, didn't I? I have to move the player map over here, or the player ribbon over here first, then join as a player. And if I were a player in this game, this is what I would be seeing. Same basic map. All the various... For example, the secret doors are not visible to a player. All the rooms are just rooms with the grid. There's no numbers on them or anything. And that is what a player with the dynamic lighting layer off would see. Get rid of this. We'll come back. That's a torch. We'll, we'll be needing that here in a minute. Take that off. And this is what a player with the dynamic lighting layer on would see if their token isn't on the map. Uh, they can't see anything because they don't have anything with eyes on this map to see with. But if they were to, uh, for example, have a creature that had vision, in this case it's got huge light and huge vision, it shows everything on the map. Now what the dynamic lighting layer does is basically sets up um, a block in that line of sight. So I'm going back here as a GM. There we got the same map, same torch here. There's nothing on the uh, dynamic lighting layer here. We'll switch over to that. See, there's nothing here. So there's nothing to block the light coming off this torch, and more importantly, coming back to this torch, because this torch is our eyes. It's the player's eyes. Um, they're, whatever their token, whatever token they have control of that has the has sight ability marked on is both potentially a, a source of light and the eyes that pick up the light. Makes more sense here in a second. So on the dynamic lighting layer, any line you lay down as a polygon or just a straight line or even a hand-drawn, don't use hand-drawn, it takes up too much computer time. You want to use a polygon or even like a filled um, square would work. Any line drawn on this layer is going to be, uh, is going to block line of sight. I like to use nice bright colors for this. So a bright orange for wall works pretty well, or a bright yellow. I'm going to go with yellow tonight. So a polygon line is just any line between two points. So let's say I want to make the edge of this cavern um, something they can't see through. So there we go. Built a line, uh, just a simple line, an outline of this space. Now let's come back to it as a player and see what that looks like. All 
Ah, see there? Players can't see anything beyond that line. So wherever the line of sight is, the, the line of the light from the torch, they can only see what's on their side of that given line, right? That's dynamic lighting line of sight tool. So I'll go back as a GM here. back to the dynamic lighting layer and so let's say alright what we want to do is block off everything that's not in the line of sight of somebody traveling down like this corridor here all you gotta do is take the polygon line tool and let's just outline the corridor Oops. Be sure to use yellow because that way it's easy to find so you can remove it later. We'll see the importance of removing later here in a minute. Uh, so, starting drawing lines here. Do, 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 if it's close enough. I'll just go ahead and go all the way around the edge here. You cover up that little bit of the corridor too. Let's so, why not go down down here now because there's no way to stop and then uh, go across here and then like remove that segment you gonna know, right click and stop drawing that line and then just start another one right on the other side there we go like that and I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going follow this entire wall all the way around doesn't matter if you're right on or not as long as you're close this is it's black on the other side of the line anyway isn't it so you're seeing black or you're seeing black it's gonna look the same and here and then I think yeah you can see the previous line started there so stop right there and then right click and set it in there you go uh, now you notice I didn't do anything for these doors here. We'll come back to that. There's uh, doors are a little tricky. So let's go to the select and the objects and tokens layer and move this torch. Um, this time, instead of the outer wall, we're looking at the inner walls. So let's go ahead and let's say our character carrying this torch is standing in this part of the dungeon here. So what's he going to see? We can switch back over to the player view. There you go. The torch can only see so much. So if we were moving around every step, the lighting starts to change a little bit. There you go. You know, you can't go through the wall. I'm, I'm trying to go like left or right, or you go up and down, but you get stopped there. There you go. Left, right. You can't leave the area pretty much where you are. And you see the, the lag on the update makes it so you can't sort of pick your torch up and then move it over here to see down here. And then, oh, wait, no, I didn't move there. I was going this direction, you kind of peek down this way. I mean, I mean, I was going this direction, you kind of look up here. No, can't do that. So let's go back down. You follow this corridor, you remember it comes around here, and then there's a big old room. There's a little door, doorway right there, and then the room. Now, those doors, they're supposed to be closed, so you can't see through them, but we didn't outline them, we didn't indicate on the dynamic layer anything to show that there is a door there as opposed to just a regular hallway. So what are we going to do about that? We want to make this realistic, right? Come back as a GM. Alright, so we're going to go back to the dynamic lighting layer and we're going to add doors here. 
Well, there are two ways to do this. Uh, it really depends on your game, your gaming style, how much uh, trouble you want to put into it versus how, how much, um, I guess, realism and information you want to have available. So the first obvious easy way to put in a door is just the same as you did a wall. Uh, I'm going to switch colors here. I'm going to use orange. Now, how about this hot pink? Hot pink would make, make a good uh, inconspicuous door. And then the best way to do it is put the line right down the middle. Right like that. Now you notice the, the hot pink is a different color than the yellow. And then I stretched it out well beyond what's needed. Uh, to make it very visible, very easy to find later because you're going to need to pick it up and erase it as the players open that door. Once the door is open, they can see through, so you got to remove that line. Right? So let's go back to the uh, token layer. And here's a little trick for you GMs who uh, don't want to keep going over here and switching to as player. If you click on your token, you got to have a token here. And you type, I believe it's Control L. Yep, there you go. Control L for look uh, is kind of the, the token's eye view, what a player controlling that token would see. And now you can see that he sees like a little offshoot here and a little square for the door. So he knows there's a door here, but he can't see through it. Whereas this one, I haven't done anything yet. He sees all he sees is a square. So he knows there's supposed to be a door there, but he can still see right through it. Also, because I have that one option selected, a token that moves up to a door can't move through it if it's still closed. Which is a nice bonus. Then just click anywhere to unselect that token and no longer see just what it sees. And this other door is going to be something I'm going to do the other way. Uh, this is, There's no real better or worse way. Uh, to be honest, they're all kind of bad. They have their own benefits and downsides. So this is quite, kind of a more complicated method, but it works too. Uh, and to show why I use this, we're going to go all the way back to the map layer here. And then in this particular situation I have some doors set up. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to say, I'm not even going to look it up, I'm just going to say I want a simple wooden door here. So I got this token that is supposed to come up and look like a, a wooden door, but I don't know why. It doesn't seem to have done so. Yeah, it's going. What layers have ended up on? Ah, there it is. I need to move the map all the way to the back. Of the map layer. That way the tokens that pop up. There actually shouldn't be on the map layer at all. I'm delete one. And move the other one to the token layer. Because that's where it actually needs to be. So there we go. So this t door is set up to fit right into one square and kind of look like a door. So again, as a player comes through, da -da -da, there you go. Not only is there a little square, but there's an actual door for them to interact with. However, if we were to do the same thing here as we did with the previous door and just draw a line, dynamic lighting, single polygon line right through the middle boom well that doesn't look as nice let's we'll see why come here looking at it as a player and okay there's something that's supposed to be a door I don't know it's hard to tell and you know from the other side well can't get to the other side from here you gotta come out and be a GM to go through a locked door and then upside and they, the player won't see the description there. That's for the GM. 
go. I'll make that more clear. I'll show you as an actual player. And that's just something set up uh, on the token. And again, you can see how you can't really tell what that door is. It's just sort of there. And also, as a player, I can't get through there. I can't, can't even like sneak around and come in through the side or anything because my, my token is stuck where it is. It can't go through the dynamic lighting layer. So that's nice. But the picture is awful. So the other way to work a door with the dynamic lighting layer takes a little more uh, input from the GM. They've got to be paying more attention. What you can do, oops, again, on the dynamic lighting layer, polygon line, I still like orange. First off, let's get rid of the previous one. Boom. And this time, we've we'll, got to draw two lines, one on each side of the door. Now, you're right. You're right. This the way things are set right now, as the player comes along, they're not going to see anything. or Well, they see just a little bit of anything. So this is where it's your responsible, responsibility as a GM to come along and say, all right, hang on just a second. Go to the token layer, the, the dynamic lighting layer, select only the one line and delete it. And then say, all right, so as you come around this corridor, you see a door and the players will actually see the entire door. Ta -da. There you go. There are other things you can do with this. Uh, for example, uh, walls during strategic combat. If you have like a, a short, a small wall in the middle of a field or something, a stone wall or something for hiding behind for cover, um, you can draw just a line through it on the dynamic lighting layer and it'll provide a, a certain amount of visual cover that way. And, you know, there are other things you can do, but that's the basic idea. And then, ideally, you would go through beforehand and add your dynamic lighting to all the lines throughout the dungeon. It's, it's good to have a, a token like this that you can drag along while you're doing so, just to keep track of what you have and haven't done yet. But, um, there you go. Got any questions, comments, concerns? Please leave uh, leave us some feedback in the comments below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.